Hi everyone, welcome to another Community Roundup video where we take a look at exciting things happening in and around the Blender community. I think this is going to be a cool episode because, as you may know, the Blender conference happened recently, which means that there's now a huge suite of exciting talks on the main Blender channel from digital professionals all around the world, basically showing how you can use the software for like creative applications across various industries. As well as this, I've been given some new channels to take a look at, and I think you're going to like them as well. And there's also a really, really cool new Geometry Nodes course, which has quickly become like my highest recommendation recommendation now for people who want to learn how to use geometry nodes. So without further delay, let's get into it. So yes, the Blender conference, it was amazing. There were so many people. I did manage to go this time and it was fantastic meeting like such a wide variety of people, including some of yourselves. So thank you if you came and said hi, like it was lovely meeting all of you. But every time they do a conference, they upload all of the talks from all of these industry professionals onto the official Blender channel on YouTube. There is so much to go through, but I will highlight some of my favorite ones, even though I've still got so many to watch. Spaceships concept design pipeline for sci-fi. This one is by Alberto Petronio. I think that's how you pronounce the name. They work for Cloud Imperium Games, so the people that make Star Citizen. And it's a really interesting talk on like how to concept and design spaceships. They do also incorporate geometry nodes as well. Now this is actually a common theme throughout the conference because there were quite a few talks talking about how to use geometry nodes for assisting in the concept design workflow. So another one that I'll recommend is Procedural Fantasy City Creation Using Geometry Nodes. This one's by Emilis, and this was a really cool one because they basically showed how they have created a range of what I would consider modular node groups for building up different types of buildings and combining them into much more complex city structures. So if we actually click on this one and take a look. So there are a couple of cool points in this one I want to highlight. So if we go over to, I think it's seven and a half minutes. Here you go. So this shows their node group system. And essentially what they were aiming to do was create these complex structures which grow out from like central points to create interesting city layouts. They do go over this in like a fair amount of detail, showing the different ways you can combine them in an adaptive way so that their shape changes. So just to kind of demonstrate this in a bit more detail, this was the bit that I think people found really cool, where they can basically take planar shapes in the Blender 3D view, and as they extrude them out, the geometry nodes will automatically use that as a guide to build out a much more complex town or city structure. That's one of the things I found during this conference, is there are so many good examples of people integrating what is a pretty new feature, geometry nodes, into their professional workflows. So those two, the spaceship one and this one are really cool, but there is another spaceship one as well. If we go down to this one, using geometry nodes for vehicle concept art, by Daniel Bystedt, you probably know them because they've done a ton of like the uh, Blender splash screens and demo files. They work for Goodbye Kansas Studios who have done like a bunch of video game cinematics as well as other things, but you've probably seen that as well. Just to quickly show you a part of the Goodbye Kansas demo reel, we've got like some uh, cyberpunk cinematics, the Suicide Squad, Assassin's Creed Valhalla and stuff like that. Anyway, so they've been using Geometry Nodes to design spaceships, which seems to be like a pretty common thing happening now as well, because I believe Mark Kingsnorth has also released like a new spaceship gen generator as well. But the thing I like about this talk is that Danny actually goes into like some really good intricate detail showing how everything was put together. So this one plays more like a tutorial than some of the other talks, which I would consider more as like kind of general overview kind of breakdowns. So if you want something to follow along with for doing these concept workflows, I would recommend this talk. For me, one thing in particular I found interesting was aligning greebles to the closest edge of meshes so that you don't get these kind of greeble objects overhanging from the edge of a shape. And then of course we had Andrew Price, otherwise known as Blender Guru, who I'm sure many of you have done the donut tutorial. His talk this time was Beginner's Guide to Photorealism. It was a really interesting talk actually, like he always has this very professional presentation style, obviously because he's a YouTuber as well and we're all good at presenting. But no, it was really interesting, he was talking about lights and materials and optics as well, basically taking a lot of reference imagery from different movies and especially Toy Story 4 and talking about what those movies do well. So if you're interested in like maybe making shorts or like moving into the visual effects space or if you're just generally interested in photorealism, this this is definitely a good one to watch. I'll tell you what, this one's also good if you're interested in just general photography, because it goes over a bunch of general camera tips as well, motion blur, shutter speed, depth of field, types of lens flares and stuff like that. So just a couple more I want to recommend. Brent Patterson did an interesting one about, oh that's a bit of a weird visual, uh, making a music video with someone remotely like while the COVID lockdown was happening. And it was an interesting talk basically showing how you can creatively use photo scans or like photogrammetry of areas for artistic effects. And it doesn't necessarily matter that the photo scans aren't super high quality, because if you make it kind of comply to a style, then it's still really interesting and you can make a cool result from it. What I'm looking at here is like one technique which took people aback, because I don't think many people knew that you could do this. It was really cool. So basically, the person they were working with took a 360 footage of a London underground station, and Brent basically mapped the cameras and used the data to make a 3D scan of the tunnel. That was really interesting. I, I didn't know that was possible either. There was another interesting talk from Martins, whose presentation 
presentation was like a combination of this museum-like walk around experience in the Blender game engine, talking about how they became interested in the projects they're doing, but it works up to them talking about their team's new project, which is their physical celestial objects pack. You may know these people from making the physical Starlight and Atmosphere add-on, and when I met them at the conference, they were nice enough to give me a physical copy of physical Starlight and Atmosphere. Let me just show you this. There we go, it's on a floppy disk. I thought that was quite funny. Okay, so that's conference talks. Maybe you'll find something interesting in there. I think you probably will. The next thing I want to show you is an amazing new course by Erindale. So if you've been around on this channel for a while, you may know who Erindale is. They do a lot of procedural stuff in the Blender community. I've recommended their content so many times. They now work for Unity as a senior generator artist. And we also both attended a private geometry nodes meeting at the conference. Here's the receipt. Basically, I would consider them an expert with procedural node systems, and they've done so much with geometry nodes. Let's take a quick look at their page here. So this course is available on the Canopy Games website. It's called Advanced Geometry Nodes for Blender 3.3 Plus. Now don't let the word advanced fool you because while watching this course I noticed that Erin has a very very welcoming and beginner friendly presentation style. I might show you some of it but let's just take a quick look down through the page. Basically the aim of this course is going to show you how to make like this organic vegetation bridge and it's going to go over some advanced geometry nodes concepts. On the initial video here on the product page they basically give you a quick rundown of the things which you will learn. So they're Going to talk about how you'll run through the volume cube node, the shortest path node, accumulate node, and all of these pretty recent features to make interesting artistic effects. This isn't the only course they have available in Canopy Games. They have other courses for like a more beginner approach to geometry nodes, procedural materials in Blender, and then there are other courses available on the website from other tutors such as Michael Bridges. If you do get the course, it's based on the Teachable platform. So like if you've ever used another course website like CG Boost, it's based on the same platform as that. It's basically really easy to track your progress and to watch the different videos. One thing I like about this course in particular is how accessible it is, because not only is Arendelle very good at giving you time to think about the concepts they're talking about, they also know how to present it very visually. So like they will annotate on the screen, the keys they're pressing are being cast to the screen as well. It's captioned, the interface is large, the cursor is large. So like it's so visually accessible for everyone. So even when they're going into more complex subjects like Booleans with SDFs, sign distance fields, they still maintain this careful and accessible presentation style. So that's why I would recommend it to people. Even though it's called an advanced course, it still feels very beginner friendly. And it's quite rare to come across courses which find that balance well. So if you're interested in picking that up, I'll leave my affiliate link in the description. You don't have to use that link, but basically it helps support this channel as well if you want to. Okay, I think we've spoken enough about geometry nodes, so I think it's time to take a look at some tutorial channels. Who's up first? Kaizen Tutorials. So this is someone that I met for the first time at the Blender conference, and they were lovely. I also now owe them a drink. They have a collection of surprisingly, I don't want to say surprisingly, it's not surprising, high quality tutorials. If you've been enjoying the content on my channel, you will definitely enjoy the content on Kaizen Tutorials. So in this video, which actually blew up quite a bit, how to create professional materials, they will very nicely present some of the fundamental concepts of making interesting and smart procedural materials. A lot of the things that we've covered on the channel before, but they do it in a very nicely edited and well presented way. You can take a look here through the chapters, getting the base color, curvature maps, how all of these different inputs work in the node editor, setting up an edge mask, how the different vector types work, using ambient occlusion for effects, which you know is one of my favorite things to do, smart ways for applying the base color, also creating good inputs for the metalness and roughness, and creating normal information. So at the end of this pretty short video, it's only like 11 minutes, you will come away with a pretty cool looking sci-fi material that smartly adapts to the shape of the mesh. So yeah, all around a pretty high quality video. It's at about 116,000 views after 10 days at the time of recording this. Okay, I've shown you a bunch of YouTube videos and of course, let's take a look at a Blender project now. So, friend of the channel, Chris, has created what they described as a simple water shader doodle in cycles. A lot of people love this one because it looks fantastic, and it was also picked up by the 80 level publication as well. So if we take a look here, image one with Suzanne being drowned in the water. Image two, we can see the interesting refraction happening throughout the mesh. And image three, where we can also see like the kind of cool stick effects happening over the uh, object. Now, a lot of you will be looking at this and thinking, wow, how do I do that myself? Well, actually, Andrew Price also was as well, as you can see down here. <laughs> um, well, they were nice enough to actually put together a tutorial. So if you take a look here, making realistic water in Blender. It's not a narrated video, but it is pretty easy to follow. Like it's well edited again, nicely spliced together. Large interface as well. I'm noticing these creators are more considerate than me when I make my tutorials because I don't 
always like enlarge interface elements to make things easier. But yeah, they basically annotate and take you through the process of making this water shader. And yes, there are volume elements to the shader as well. So yeah, and it's only a short one as well, like two minutes 18. So I think this is like a really valuable tutorial condensed into a short amount of time. I'm sure loads of you will find this useful. Okay, so we're going to move on to more community projects. But before we do, if you've been enjoying this video, then consider subscribing and more importantly, ringing that notification bell. Because if you like this video, we'll do more of these roundups in the future. So up next, we have a video which I have been so impressed with from a channel called Doodly. Someone recommended this video to me on the uh, community feed because I basically put out a post on my YouTube community feed asking people what they'd been inspired by recently. And this is an amazing video explaining how FK, so forward kinematics, and IK, inverse kinematics works, but the entire video is animated. And it's so good, it must have taken ages to put together. And it's like, it's 11 minutes long as well, which like, if you've ever done like animation for videos, you know that it can take ages to put together just like 60 seconds of time. But you can see it's all animated as they're explaining like the benefits of forward and inverse kinematics and how they act differently, even referring to like popular animated movies as well. I really want to know like how long it took them to put this together. So if you're interested in animation or rigging or just how the kinematics work, it is absolutely worth a watch. So thank you very much, Doodly. And also from looking at the views, it seems that people are resonating with the quality of the video, over 200,000 views since October 7th. Let's take a quick look at their channel as well. They have a few videos. It seems like they do animated content. And also, if you didn't know, YouTube has made some UI changes recently. So shorts now appear on a different tab on the channel, which I think is a good change. So yeah, definitely an interesting channel to check out if you're into animation content. So next up, checking in with our good friends of the channel, CG Boost. Martin Kleckner, who I have recommended several times in these roundup videos because of their like amazing work on environments in Blender, has produced a new video, 10 tips for creating epic landscapes in Blender. Basically for this video, they're gonna focus on how to properly study references, how to concept your environments, focusing on the camera view and how your camera is gonna be animating through the environment so you know what to you know spend more artistic effort on. They also talk about using gobos, which is basically where you can like put something in front of a light source to get more realistic shadowing over a scene, which is really important for getting a sense of realism. Uh, while talking about this, they also make reference to some popular movies as well, showing you how much of a difference it makes. Speaking of gobos, I would like to recommend the gobos light textures on Blender Market. I've mentioned this in a video before, um, but basically if you want to make use of this lighting effect, then this is like the go-to product in Blender. It includes like some really easy to control shadowing effects, including like animated ones as well. Uh, it's compatible with the asset manager with no extra add-on required. It even supports like volumetrics as well. And it's separated down into different categories. So you have like windows, gobos, geometric ones, abstract, leaves, animated versions of those, caustics, forest, clouds, grids. And they seem to be adding more over time as well. And you can see how much it really adds in terms of like photorealism. Oh, it looks like someone recreated the Blade Runner scene here as well. Oh, Lewix Lynn, I, I follow them on Instagram. Okay, so like this product has been like really uh, tested by the community. Oh, James Traley. All right, I'll stop looking at these. Anyway, so that effect can be applied to environments and Martin Kleckner makes a point about that in this. But they also talk about other useful tips when it comes to making environments, such as optimizing your assets to make it even more performant in Blender, using 2D planes where you don't need to use 3D objects, which is also kind of good for getting like parallax effects. Also the importance of focusing on like a horizon line and then also finally tips for rendering and compositing. I always think their videos provide a lot of value. So thank you very much, Martin. And also it was good to finally meet you at the conference. Damn, I think this video is starting to get quite long, but I've still got more to recommend. I might not be able to get through everyone because there's just so much happening in the community. So before we continue, I'll just make a note that if you've been inspired by anyone recently in the community, then feel free to leave them down in the comments and I might be able to check them out and share them in a future video. So next up, I want to recommend this relatively small channel called Benji 3 d Now, how would I describe this channel? Kind of a bit like Smeef, who I recommended in a previous video. It's got a more of a retention cult style editing, you know, very short to the point, highly edited, very entertaining. Uh, let me just show you where, like, learn this to make money from Blender fast. I know these, like, make money videos are a bit, like, kind of hit or miss, but this one is very entertaining and also fairly educational. It talks about like screen replacement. So how you can replace parts of like a stock video footage. The thing is for the amount of effort it takes to like edit these videos and put them together, they really deserve more attention. I feel like I've also heard they're quite young as well. Oh yeah, in the about page, 13 year old VFX mastermind posting advanced blended tutorials. So yeah, for the age, like the effort and the quality they're putting into the videos is actually surprisingly good. And yeah, like I said, if you enjoy this kind of entertaining retention cult style, then it's definitely 
definitely worth checking out. And also, speaking of um, Smeef, who I also just mentioned there, they've also put out a useful new video. We're going to take a quick look at that. So we've got a video here, how to animate anything in seconds from Smeef. Now, dare I say, this may be like one of the more sensible videos they've made <laughs> that I actually found really, really useful because I never really thought about doing this. I'm not going to spoil the whole thing, but it's basically like a quick or well, kind of quick tip slash trick for like animating anything. It's something I might actually try to automate with a script at some point. So yeah, it's making use of the lattice, which I don't really see too many people using because I think it's quite like ungainly when it comes to animating objects. A lattice is all about like kind of mo moving mesh points in relation to the proximity of the points on the lattice. But it's not just about using the lattice. They also combine it with bendy bones to create a surprisingly powerful rig. But it's not just lattice and bendy bones. It's also using some constraints. But basically, if you don't like using armatures like regular bones, just as they are, and you want something that could be applied to like any simple object you have, then it's actually a really, really cool technique. So if you want to learn more about that, check them out. From the looks of it, they're also making an online school. I haven't checked this out yet. Let's take a quick look. Level Up Academy. From zero to hero, industry ready skills and masterful portfolios. Smeef, if you're watching this, I'd be interested in hearing what this is about. Like, let me know if you like that is. Okay, how long has this recording been so far? How many of you are still with me? Because we've got more content to talk about. Have any of you heard of Riley Brown? Yes, another tutorial channel, Riley Brown. I've seen them around on Twitter quite a bit. I think they follow me. They had quite a popular tutorial a while back for procedural texturing, uh, better edge masks in Blender. Quite a nice video there. As you can tell from the presentation style of the channel, they have quite a good attention to detail, but the series I want to recommend is their new one called Unlock Better Color in Blender. This one, again, a bit like Doodly's video, is mostly animated, but not in the same kind of way. This is talking about the new AGX color transform. Now, AGX is a new transform which comes from Troy, who I believe is the original person behind the filmic color transform, which a lot of us use in Blender because it like prevents the white or bright areas from being like super blown out in your renders. But AGX is a new interesting alternative. And in this series, Riley is basically going to explain it, talk about how you can install it in Blender and compare it to other color transforms. Uh, the series reads a lot like a video essay, which I think is a style that a lot of people seem to enjoy. So if you're interested in learning more about the different types of color spaces in Blender or how AGX could be useful for your workflow, then definitely give it a watch. Now, since I know you'd like to see a comparison, here is the filmic color transform. And here is the AGX color transform. And you can see how much more information is contained there. But they also go into quite a bit of detail doing these different lighting tests. So the comparisons mostly happen in part two. Uh, the installation process and an example of how to apply in Blender is in part three. So yeah, worth checking out if that's the kind of thing you're interested in. And you know what? Let's take a look at one more thing. Well, maybe a couple of things. So one of my good friends, Ben, who you will know as BBBN19, has created a couple of new really cool projects. So first of all, they have a hallway warp, which is quite good for like Halloween. It's got a bit of a freaky vibe. It reminds me a bit of PT as well. Like, do you know the old horror thing that was on PlayStation, was it? Anyway, you can download the demonstration file here on Gumroad if you want to learn how to achieve this trippy effect. And also another one I want to show is just this uh, glowy plant they created in Geometry Nodes. I like it because it's emissive and it has my color style and I just think it's really pretty. So basically, I think that'll do it for this video. If you made it this far, then what emoji should you put in the comments? All right, I'll give you an option. Either put a floppy disk because I'm pretty sure there's a floppy disk emoji or alternatively put a hat emoji in the comments because another cool channel and a friend, Render Rides, gave me this uh, little hat decoration as well as some other things. So, so yeah, take your pick. And if you put that emoji in the comments, we'll be able to see who made it this far through the video. Also, since you're here, maybe uh, check out some of the other videos videos on my channel and maybe check out some of my free and paid Blender add-ons and products at curtisholderonline slash store. I'm sure you'll find some useful stuff on there. I recommend checking out the modular workspaces add-on for speeding up your startup workflow in Blender and also admire our lovely patrons. If you sign up to my Patreon to help me make these videos and other projects then you will get your name put on this Hall of Patrons artwork. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone. Have a fantastic day. I hope you found something useful. Let me know if you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.